this video, we talk about the incredible new Blackmagic 12K camera. We talk about shooting with different compression ratios and how they make a big difference. The noise pattern on this new sensor and the special post-processing in DaVinci this camera needs to look its best. Our original unboxing had some unreliable tests with a soft rehoused lens. The tests were rushed. We had some more time to test this camera and we have learned a ton. So, here are our first impressions of the 12K camera. This camera is unlike any camera in the world. Blackmagic has really made something special here. And that's because this new camera contains a new super 35 millimeter sensor that was developed by Blackmagic. This is unique because most camera manufacturers buy third party sensors. Other than the lenses you're shooting with, Blackmagic now controls every part of the image capture process from the sensor to the editing and color grading software. I've got to say, although at first we were not quite sure about this new camera, after using it for a week, we have grown to love it. And we've learned how to use it. Every time you roll on this thing, you're burning through data. It's like a special experience. When the camera is rolling, it's like you're filming on IMAX because it's not as expensive as IMAX, but you are burning through hard drive space. This has been a new kind of filming experience for us. You may remember a few months ago when Blackmagic announced the 12K camera. Now, after watching this announcement video, we imagined we could film a whole scene wide in 12K and then punch in on anything we wanted. Sadly, we were wrong. We talked with the senior product manager from Blackmagic, Tim Schumann. And Tim said, the sharpness of your lens is definitely going to come under scrutiny if you are blowing it up a lot. Here's what we've learned. <laughs> Don't expect to be able to zoom into an HD resolution and have a usable image. There are a few reasons why zooming into HD from 12K doesn't always work. First, lenses. Optical issues like chromatic aberration and other lens defects become very prominent when cropping into 400% or 600% on the 12K image. We have noticed chromatic aberration in areas of the image where we have never noticed them when filming in 4K. Filming with quality lenses is essential if you expect to reframe more than 200% in post. Second, focus. If you plan on cropping from a medium shot to a close up, you really have to watch your focus. The subject's slightest movement can render the shot useless. It's better used for cropping into wide landscape shots. The 12K does allow you to zoom in 8X to dial in the focus though. But if the subject moves even a little, it can ruin your shot. Third, sharpening. The 12K does not apply any sharpening to the footage. So if you're cropping in, you'll need to add sharpening. Fourth, noise. This camera has noise. In our initial test, we noticed a magenta and cyan noise structure that really starts to be apparent, especially in the shadows. And many people commented on our last video saying that perhaps the noise was noticeable because we filmed our initial tests with an 18 to one compression ratio, the highest compression ratio the 12K camera has to offer. So we did some further tests. Here's some footage from our compression ratio tests. This shot was filmed at an 18 to one compression ratio. You can see the noise problem here in the gray backdrop. Notice the detail in the hair and the skin. Now, look at this shot. This was shot at Q0, the lowest compression ratio offered. Notice the noise is still present in the gray backdrop, and the image has negligible benefits compared to the 18 to one. We really think that Blackmagic has done a fantastic job with these compression ratios. But our conclusion is, no matter what compression ratio you're filming at, you're gonna get that same noise, essentially. What you're seeing here is Q0 compression, side-by-side, -side, 4K 18 to one compression. Now, we are seeing a major difference. It seems that the new 18 to one compression is not doing this 4K any favors, but the noise remains across all resolutions and all compression ratios. To really manage that noise on the 12K, you gotta use post-processing and DaVinci Resolve. We talked to Blackmagic directly about the noise issue, and Hook from Blackmagic told us that the chroma noise reduction helps a lot. And in camera, they don't apply any specific noise reduction at all. If you're thinking about pushing in on your footage, that noise is going to magnify, and you're going to need to do some post-denoising. 
Come to find out other camera manufacturers do the same thing. There's no denoising in camera. So you really have to know post-production to make the camera shine. This is true with the 12K. You need to know how to use DaVinci Resolve in order to get the best image you can out of this camera. Now, don't get me wrong. If you don't know how to use DaVinci Resolve, you can still get great results from this camera. It's just that when you're cropping in, that noise gets magnified. When you're zoomed out to 12K, you're not gonna really see any noise. The noise is so small. This is a great camera. We feel that this camera and sensor were built to be used in tandem with DaVinci Resolve. When you think about it, they really are a package deal to achieve the best image. Now, we love Blackmagic RAW, it's incredible, but it's the only format that you can record on with this camera. And we have been using a Blackmagic plugin with Adobe Premiere to edit B-RAW footage with the 12K. But right now, the Premiere Pro plugin just isn't cutting it. There's no denoiser, there's no sharpening. We really need to use DaVinci Resolve to get the best out of this camera. Now check this out, we've zoomed way into the shot and you can see the difference that Denoiser makes in DaVinci Resolve. That strange grain structure is now gone. If you know what you're doing, this camera can be incredible. We are learning more and more every day about this camera and our images just keep improving. I'm gonna pause the video here this is a serious problem. This colorful rainbow pattern you see is moiré, and we've expected it with other Blackmagic cameras. In fact, we've purchased third-party OLPF filters to fix this problem with our other Blackmagic cameras, but we didn't expect it to be here on the 12K. It seems like every day we're going back and forth with this camera. First we love it, and then we hate it, and then we love it again. This is another serious problem with this camera. This moiré could actually kind of ruin a professional shoot for you. Certain clothes have this problem. If you get moiré in camera, there's not really much you can do in post. I wish that Blackmagic would release their cameras with a better OLPF filter. So here's the question. Is this camera worth $10,000? Yes. <laughs> now, given that you can buy a G2 or a Pocket 6K, this camera might only appeal to those who want the best Blackmagic can offer in terms of resolution and frame rate options. It's really for professionals. And we feel like Blackmagic was right in marketing this camera to professionals. Check this out, this test is pretty interesting. We put the 12K head to head with the Arri Alexa Classic, which is a 2K camera. But look at these images side by side. When you're viewing these images on your phone, it doesn't really make a difference. Guys, we own a 12K camera, yes, but we still think a sharp HD image is really all you need for most applications. A, a good 4K, more than enough. It's great that you have the possibility of buying a 12K camera, don't get me wrong, and I'm glad Blackmagic is pushing the boundaries here. Is it necessary? Not really. We think that Blackmagic is right to market this camera to pros. Uh, don't let the 10K price tag fool you. This camera could go head to head with any major cinema camera, and I stand by that. Now, the camera body itself, I love the design and everything, it is kind of plasticky. Some people say it looks like a toy. So in terms of the build quality, yeah, it's not as professional as the high-end cinema cameras. But in terms of image quality and capabilities, yes, this 10K camera could go head-to-head -head image quality-wise and dynamic range-wise with an $80,000 camera. I really do believe that. Just a heads up, we collaborated with Armando last week and we did some great camera tests together. And he put the 12K head to head with his Canon C500 Mark II and R5. Two incredible cameras. Now think about this. We have the highest resolution camera that Blackmagic has, 12K. And he has the highest resolution cameras that Canon offers, 6K C500 Mark II and the 8K R5. Go ahead and watch his video when it comes out because he discovered some incredible things. Also, when we were shooting our video with him, it was kind of a dramatic moment when we discovered two software bugs with the 12K camera. One that could spell disaster for your next shoot, and I'm not exaggerating that. We have contacted Blackmagic directly about these two issues, and they are scrambling to come up with a solution. All right, that's all for today, but if you want to subscribe to Epic Light Media, please don't. But there is a new lighting channel from a guy named Brady Bassett. His videos are incredible and he really knows his stuff. Check out his channel, comment randomly on his videos and take your subscription to him. 
We understand that subscriptions are very precious. So we want to know from you, what other channels are better subscriptions than Epic Light Media? Let us know in the comments so we can direct our viewers there, away from us, away from this weird channel called Epic Light Media. All right.